and your place and registration of the car. That's what he's saying. How ridiculous is this? People don't know how bad it is. Part of what I'm telling you is to speak the truth. But one of our duties as members of normal is to know what the truth is and know what the facts are so that we can tell people about them. And what I want to do is codify that or make this easier for you to know about. We'll do a fact sheet on what the laws are, and normal does it nationally with all the states, and we can give, give these to you and mail them out to let you know what the law is just so you can tell people how ridiculous it is. And you can Because unless we know the truth, how can we speak it to other people? So that's one of the big points I want to make today is we've got to educate ourselves so we can educate other people and speak the truth. Somebody's got to tell the truth. We're, it's amazing to me. Uh, the stuff that's still being said by, it doesn't amaze me the politicians say it, but teachers are brainwashed to some extent. They don't even know what the truth is and they don't know who to believe. So we've got to, uh, we've got to have our ducks in order, we've got to have our credentials behind us to show and we've got all the support for these facts you ever need through here in the National Normal to reinforce you speaking the truth. Uh, I, I've got normal brochures for you to take with you to, to help you with some of the facts too and the background on it. What else do we do as members of normal? Besides knowing what the truth is, so we can speak it and becoming educated ourselves, so we can educate other people. The other purpose of normal, besides education and information, is to lobby to change these laws. Well, the first point is I guess we gotta know what the law is so we can change it. So I'm telling you what that is. It can be changed. But how do you change the law? Well, you can change the law through a lawsuit that would affect the whole state, but that's very rare and it's very hard to do. That paraphernalia thing was just one example and they immediately try to change it right after that. Uh, I personally got involved with drafting a medical marijuana bill back about 15 years ago. And I had a, a sponsor in the, in the house, uh, Daryl Felling, a Democrat from Terre Haute. And I, they, and they switched it around on me so you know several times so, that, so I couldn't speak and I sh kept hanging in there and I, I showed up and I spoke and the committee looked like they were going to vote to pass it and they tabled it the last minute and they're going to reconvene in a secret time and they just couldn't stand it. And it never even got out of committee, let alone on the House for a vote. But Governor Bowen was so worried, Doc Bowen, was so worried that we would have a medical marijuana bill. He was on TV with a press release saying, you know, if even if this law passes the legislature. I'm going to veto it because I'm a doctor. We don't need more drugs like this in Indiana. We've got enough problems. We don't need another view of drug to abuse. And that's what some people say, and that's the, they accept that, and that's the end of it. The irony is, ladies and gentlemen, is when Doc Bowen's wife, Beth, was sick with cancer and going through chemotherapy, guess what Doc Bowen gave his wife to help medically? He gave her marijuana. The hypocrisy in this thing just chills me. Uh, <laughs> But I'm saying we can make a difference legislatively. We've got to know when the they're meeting down here to talk in the criminal co code courts and criminal code committee or the whatever committees of the House and Senate. I think that's who it is. Would deal with new bills on this. We want or even talk anything about this area. We got to be there and say, no, I'm a concerned citizen. I'm a businessman. I'm a, I'm a housewife. Uh, I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm, I'm whatever you are. It doesn't matter. I'm a citizen. For God's sakes, and this is my state, and I'm proud to be in here. But you know, this law is not fair. I just like fair things. I'm a constitutionalist. You know, <laughs> the Fourth Amendment's out the tube when they're having dogs coming after your car, and there's no knock search warrants on lack of probable cause and, and all this stuff. For whatever your reason is, you got to let them know in the legislature that this law has to be changed. And there's every we've got all kinds of resources necessary to help draft a bill. We just need a sponsor. But to be able to get a, a, pro, uh, a politician other than the libertarian, which of course we want to legalize pot, to get the, the ones that are more likely to be elected on a state level, at least right now, although we're making great progress, um, you need to let them know that the constituency's out there and they want it legal. Because until they feel like it's safe, even if they personally believe it, and I've talked to many politicians, say, well, I agree with you, Dylan, but I'm not going to do it until I know that there's a majority of people in my district that agree with you, and I won't get killed politically by my opponent saying, he's soft on drugs! <laughs> There's such chicken oh. shits. It's all right, Chester. <laughs> uh, okay, boy. Uh, my dog. But... Uh, we got to let the politicians know it's okay for them to tell the truth themselves even if they know the truth. Because even if they know the truth, that the laws are bad and counterproductive and don't 
reduce violent crime and we're wasting our police resources and they're lying to the children and uh, it's breaking down families and, and all the other problems with it. They'll never stand up and say, yes, I'm sponsoring the bill to legalize marijuana. Uh, not because I'm a lame duck and you can't touch me or I'm leaving office or they ask me not to run again, but because I'm going to be here forever and I believe this is the best thing for my state, but we're going to have to convince them. So there's lots of ways to get politically active to help change the laws other than through a court battle as citizens and members of this group. But we've got to put pressure on our local representatives. Now we're not all from Indianapolis. That's, that's the beauty of a state chapter. We're from all over the state. And in a minute I'm going to ask you all to tell you, you stand up or sit down, you have to stand up and say your name and where you're from at least so we can see what kind of uh, places we have here around the state. But you need to put pressure. You need to write letters to the editor. You need to, when you hear something ridiculous on the radio in a talk show, you need to call in. Uh, you need to let them know that there are people out there that really believe in medical marijuana or hemp to save the farms in Indiana, or they believe in the Constitution, or they believe in law enforcement being fair and even, or against racist policies, or whatever your angle is, you got to let them know. Uh, and we can do that wherever we are and whatever level. We can take an active role as working in our political group, whatever political group we are. Because if we're working in the political group and we let our feelings and the truth be known to people we're working with, we're going to have an impact on them and they're going to impact other people in their political groups. There's other ways to do it. There's more than we can talk about here. But the, but the idea is to get the word out that marijuana is and should be decriminalized or legal. Uh, in this state and, and that we should do everything we can to educate So happy we alive, we together can survive. Stop the bullshit, stop the lies, and now's the time to legalize. Tell me, brother, tell me true, what the hell we gonna gonna do? Remember the days We saw purple haze One and one And one is three Hey, hey, baby, what you do to me? We so happy We alive We together can survive Mother Nature Heaven sent Don't belong to God 